Hey, what's up YouTube? This is going to be a video on um, doing some painted trim. This is just a few tools that are useful. Um, obviously, if you're doing coped um, corners versus inside miters, you want a good coping saw and switch the blade so it cuts on the pull stroke. I'll show you how to do that. Um, for your miters, like on door casing, a little miter clamp like this is pretty useful. Um, obviously, your caulk gun when you're done. Uh, masker knee pads are awesome to have um, if you're taking trim off you know different you, know, you could use a putty knife to get in there at first and then I have some different molding bars are not out here um, for filling nail holes uh, you can't beat Crawford's vinyl spackling paste um, you could also use you know just plastic wood wood filler frog tape if you're painting taping lines sanding block um, if once you touch up your nail holes, if you don't want them to flash through, you can use uh, Bondo glazing spot putty before you paint. And you know, you hit it first with your Crawfords, come back, hit it with this. Your nail holes will not show up if you do that method. Um, one other thing that'll make your life really easy doing trim is buying CA glue. It's two part. Um, Sio, however you say it, it's, it's basically super glue and then an activator it sets up in like five seconds so i would highly recommend you know some ca glue it allows you you know to make pieces like this really quickly you know different detailed pieces um, it's very strong another good thing to have a nail set um, you know, cat's paw. I like a little um, tri square for fine detail work. You know, speed square is always nice. I keep some different sandpaper, a little rule for your, you know, intricate measurements. Um, an angle finder. This is, you can pick this up at Home Depot. This is really handy. A nice little digital angle finder this video will be doing some trim I'll show you some different details um, you know going around outlets how to turn turn molding down this is an older home so you know the the outlets are set really low so versus just notching it out you can you know turn down miters like this I seen a, a Finnish carpentry TV that guy's a whiz um, picked up that trick from him check out his channel but other than that, I'll show you some different things through the house and how you do them. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> so that piece was 18 inches. Um, to cope it, you'll do an inside 45 degree cut. So stand your trim up. Get it flush with the fence. Now for some people, it might be easier. Take your pencil. Lay it flat and kind of trace your profile. I just kind of defined your line. And one simple trick versus just starting out with a coping saw to make this long straight cut right here. If you have a relatively straight piece of trim, all you do is flip it over and run the right side of your saw curve, you know, kiss that line. Or with MDF, you know, you can use a flap disc. You could use a Dremel. You could just use a coping saw to take the whole line. Um, MDF's easy to cope, but like if you're doing pine or oak, um, saving you just cutting that perfectly straight line really expedites coping. This piece is gonna have a cope on the right hand side. So you cut your miter inside 45, flip your piece, and then take your saw blade, go right along there and stop short. I could actually cope this whole piece out just slowly moving um, the piece of trim and just running that saw blade at you know, this 45, inside 45, and just take that out. But I like to do it this way, utilize the miter saw and then also come back with the coping saw and clean it up. So as you can see, that's just a time saver.
And then I'll come back in with the coping saw and just cope out that. And then with MDF and most trim, I like to leave like a 16th in this corner because it'll break off. So what I'll do is I'll leave, you know, leave a good portion of wood up in here just so it's more structurally sound. That way I just go back in the piece of trim this butts into, I'll just notch it with my knife. And that way it's, you don't ever have to worry about that top breaking off. That's kind of a good little trick. I'll show you what I'm talking about. You can clamp it down to it, makes it easier. But hold your finger here. Just a... And all you want to do is back cut it, get to your line. And the key with the coping saw, obviously MDF is really easy. Real wood's a lot more difficult, but it's moving fast with gentle pressure. Then you can take a sharp knife, a file, sandpaper, and fine tune it so it's perfect. I highly recommend an Ulfa utility knife. They're Japanese made. They're really good high carbide blades. really useful for all sorts of things. I've seen guys glue sandpaper on the profile of a piece of trim. So obviously I'll have to notch out the piece because that's the way I do mine. But I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. I have to notch it out more, but it's a little difficult when you're holding a piece in your hand. But you can see how I leave that chunk in there so that way that the top of that cope is more stable and I take my time and notch out that inside corner of the receiving board and just use my knife it's a pretty good trick you can slide your piece back in there and take your pencil and mark out just that very top and cut it out So as you can see, that's a nice fit. So like I said, when you're satisfied with your cope, you like everything, butt it up, get it tight, and then just come over here, scribe the back side, and just know that's an outside 45. So I know I'm flush. Slight bow in the wall. Get my mark. Why we're here. I'll use this measurement, which is five and a half. So we'll go cut those two pieces. And Okay, so for the baseboard to uh, turn down and versus just notching it out, first you want to make sure the outlet cover is square, which it is. Um, I set a piece of base in there of how I've been setting it around the room and traced it out, which you'll need to do that at the correct height. Now, I want a 3 16th reveal all the way around. So I cut a little piece. So the measurements I wanna get are here to there, right here to right there, it's flush. 
I would say two and three eight. Two and three eighths. So that's also two and three eighths. Now for the bottom. And three and eight. We were taking our measurements were two and three eighths here, across three and an eighth, two and three eighths up. Um, when you're laying this out, I'll kind of show you a trick. It kind of makes it easy to have something to look at versus just trying to, um, you know, visualize it in your head. First thing we're going to do is make our bottom piece to go around the outlet, rip that off through the table saw, and then get our measurements. For, from the outside corner to the inside corner. So 45 degrees. This will be the part that's turning down. Top there, go two and three eighths, and I'll make a parallel 45 degree miter there. Going from 10, I'm trying to mark the very top edge. And for ease, I'll flip it. Just so I can see see it better and don't have to move the camera. I usually don't like to cut through the back, but perfect. So that's one side. And I'll do the other. And that's where combination square can come in nice doing stuff like this. So you can kind of see what's going on. So we've got those two pieces. Now we need to cut the bottom. And it was three and an eighth on the inside dimension two corresponding 45 degree miters so we just flip the molding swing to 45 Give you a close up so you can see on that point of my mark and I want to run my blade so the left side of the kerf just kisses that mark. So I cut it long. Now you can see, we'll glue this piece up. And then basically we'll take from this point across, we'll get ripped off to give us our baseboard height. So we'll glue that up with CA glue, run it through the table saw, and then put our corresponding trim pieces from the dimensions on the wall. And you'll need, need to glue about halfway down because remember that bottom part's getting ripped off with the saw. And put some good pressure to get any of that glue squeezed out of that joint. Be careful not to glue your hands. So you can see I got a little squeeze out. That'll sand off easy enough. This has got to be painted yet. So then we'll take from this intersection, or no, excuse me, this intersection across is going to get ripped off. Get 
and the homeowner's got a table saw here. So I'll get that set up. Lay this up here. Line up the saw blade curve. You can see that carbide tooth. We want it just lined up with the curve. Kissing our line. Blade square. Oh, there's our piece. We'll go check it out, see if it fits. Moment of truth. Really don't like that wallpaper. Have to touch that up with some gray in the bottom there. But I think that sanded. Then obviously, you can tell marking the wall, that way you know you got an outside corner here so you just have to get your miter your 45 to that point intersection right here and then same here i can do a butt butt into that just a cross cut with a miter there i'll cope this piece and then i have an outside corner here Outside corner there, and that's it. I'm done. Project further out from the wall than the actual profile of the trim. So if you're coming up against a real thin register, you don't want to just have this unfinished end. So what you do is you basically miter this corner and turn the profile down, and it kind of is a gradual transition um, into the register, it kind of dies into the register. So you want to mark the very top. And this piece needs to be 32 and 316. There's my mark. And to make it easier, this, this is where the register is going to be. So then I'm going to take and miter this 45 degrees like this. I just flipped the molding or the base so it's easier to see my point. And kind of a neat trick when you're doing, you know, real fine detail work, if you need to just shave off, you know, just a little bit. You can put your saw down, butt your workpiece into it with slight pressure, raise it up, and that'll take like half a blade width because the carbide is actually protrudes further from the blade. So that's kind of a nice trick to know. So then I'll show you basically what we're doing. So we want to take that profile and terminate it down. So we'll need another 45. So basically, you know, just for visualization, you can see that those two points would intersect. So, now to cut this piece to finish, we're going to want the kerf outside of our blade just to barely, you know, have our blade kerf right in here. So we take, take it off to the paint. So then as you can see, 
that'll be our termination next to the register and that's where your CA glue comes in handy and you can just buy this on Amazon it's I bought the Bob Smith it's called Bob Smith Industries bought it a couple times it's actually really strong works great for baseboard and moldings So you apply it there, and it'll set up in like five seconds. Now that spray will discolor this, but this is getting painted anyways, it's just primed. So that'll get sanded, filled. You can see it's not perfect, but you coat that with that vinyl spackle paste and then um, glazing putty and you'll never see that joint and there you can see and like I said with a little filler and glazing putty you'll never see that it's for a nice finished look when you got you come up you know you end your wall either a staircase or a floor register it's not protruding the thickness of your baseboard so it kind of eases the transition so as you can see this register along the floor, like I was saying, you know, projects maybe a quarter inch. Well, you know, having that unfinished edge would not look good sticking out further. That's why I like this little uh, miter return. Just gives it a nice clean look. I'll shoot that with a nail gun. So as you can see, got both pieces now when you're nailing your base i just usually go along find one stud you know you can tap on the wall or if you you know kind of have an idea of how a wall is put together structurally with the framing 16 inches on center but you know like for this cutout for this register there'll be a stud in here in here and it should be you know one roughly in here and you can tap and there is a stud there. Um, I nailed top and bottom. I'm shooting them with 18 gauge um, nailer, two inch. Now obviously you could use a stud finder, but I mean, I'm going over paneling and um, haven't had any luck with it, which I don't, unless I'm having trouble knock it on the wall to find the studs. I don't ever hardly use those, but um, they work all right. Or you can, if you're going over drywall, you can usually see nail pops. Um, and if you're trying to keep baseboard tight to the wall in a spot where there isn't a nail, you can scissor nail, where you angle one at a pretty steep, like 45 degree angle that way, come back and nail it the other way. That's called scissor nailing, that works pretty well. Here, I'm going to angle and since this is two pieces and adhesive just holding it together, I always like to get a nail somewhere up in that corner. So I'll lay my tape out. And there is a stud right there. And you kind of want to put downward pressure. This trim I'm working with, this is bowed. And plus, if you know there's a crown, if you're actually using like pine, you really have to put some pressure sometimes. Or if the floor is uneven, you can take a scribe, set it to your maximum um, difference and gap, and then scribe your baseboard just depending on how, how much time you want to spend. I'll make sure to angle it in this corner, apply downward pressure. And 
And one thing when you're nailing, doing finished carpentry, always think about filling nail holes. You know, if you can hide them, that's always a big plus. If you can tuck them back in somewhere where you don't gotta fill them to paint them, you know, that's always a good thing to keep in mind. Depending on what you're doing. So once again, don't know if we'll have another one in this wall. Which you can scissor nail just to be sure. And no matter what, with your, usually, you know, you can hit the bottom plate. If you set this nail, just make sure in a slight downward angle, you can for sure at least get the bottom plate and then you can try to scissor nail the top. And if you're curious, if you hit a stud, you can always try to grab your baseboard and pull it from the wall. Sometimes it'll be really apparent if you miss. cope there I gotta put this casing on this door put that piece of molding back almost done with this project today you can see they wanted to go with a simple kind of farmhouse or craftsman style door um, just using MDF casing but if you can see here that's a quarter inch reveal and I mitered this top and then filled that piece in and glued it Kind of like I just showed you with the base, just kind of a return back onto itself. So there's a finished edge here. I don't know if you can make that out up there. And kind of, you can see there's an outside miter. Um, had to turn the baseboard down again here. Because that register doesn't project into the out from the wall enough. And then I still got to add a piece in here. Had to cut notch that molding with a multi-tool. Which if you're doing trim or any home improvement projects, highly recommend a multi-tool. 